Lovely. So good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Vic. Um, I'm one of the development workers here at CCVS. And there's a couple of my colleagues um, in the room. So most of you, I think, will know Chris, um, who does most of our training. And we've also got Ellie um, as well. Um, so if you've got any questions, um, feel free to um, pop off mute or pop them in the chat and Chris will be helping me keep an eye on those kinds of things because um, when you're presenting and trying to keep an eye on the chat it can become um, a little bit challenging so thank you Chris for um, helping me out this morning. Um, so there's a smallish group of us today and um, we're, we're going to do one of our exercises um, using breakout rooms um, towards the end of the session um, and so we'll go through that as we get closer to it um, but I'm just going to share my screen oh. um, there we go so can you see my slides can you give me a thumbs up? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Great. So um, this morning's session is all about working together. Um, it's going to be quite an interactive session. So I've got some questions to ask you. So um, we're going to have a bit of a conversation as we go through the session. Um, um, we'll send you a copy of the slides at the end. So don't feel like you need to write down everything that's on the slides. Um, at the end, there's also some links to some useful web pages. Um, so that you'll have those links as well. Um, so what we're gonna do. So um, yeah, so thanks everyone for joining us. So yeah, today we're gonna be talking about working together. Um, so the first thing that I just want to say is that, oh, let's check my slides are working, there we go. So working together is not the same as partnership. Um, so a lot of people, sort of use the words interchangeably but actually partnership is a very specific kind of working together so today we're going to talk about all different types of working together formal ways and informal ways um, so if you catch me using the word partnership I apologize because I, I might not mean it um, but that's one of the the things that it's useful for us to to think about so what are some of the different ways that we can work together so um, it can range from very informal ways of working together to really formal um, ways so most of what we mean by working together is actually um, at the lower end of the spectrum so um, it's ways that we're interacting with other organizations whilst we're still remaining independent organizations so that might be things like networking events like today where we're coming along and talking about our experiences um, we, that might be signposting people to other organizations so um, understanding people's pathways so if you come to us and we do these activities with you and then you move on to another one there's some informal working arrangements um, and the other one that I popped in there is, is something called an action learning set which is where people come together to almost coach each other through topics so um, it's ways that that you um, individually can work together to help solve your problems but you're still retaining um, your um, independence from each other so some other examples that that we sort of facilitate here at ccvs and um, we do things like hot topics for trustees um, we have a volunteer manager network um, where we talk about all kinds of um, topics that volunteer managers are facing um, and we also run some networking events as part of our support Fenland project so um, looking for, to help people come together um, so one of the things that we've been talking about recently is one of our groups needs a new venue so as part of a networking event people are you know reaching out and trying to help that group find a new venue so lots of great ways to come together but really informal as we get a little bit more formal, we start to think about normally specific projects. So that might be that two or more organizations are coming together to deliver specific activities, but everything else that they do remains independent of each other. So 
um, and the example that we've got is is support Cambridgeshire. So we work with Hunts Forum and to, and Cambridge Acre, and we deliver various activities under the support Cambridgeshire banner but we also deliver activities for our own organizations under our individual banners so um, so we have to be really clear when we're acting as support Cambridgeshire and when we're acting as CCVS um, and that's probably the most common type of joint working um, that the community groups and organizations um, would be would be delivering. So we're coming together often to bid for a project from a from a from an awarding body or a council, um, and but it's just to deliver that activity. The as we get a bit more formal, we then have constituted consortiums, um, which is where we then have a legal entity um, that is created to deliver those activities so they've normally got a membership structure um, to make sure that the members are controlling what that consortium is doing um, so that's where more formal partnerships um, and joint ventures come to play so Chris was explaining to me I'm still quite new in the role so Chris was explaining to me about Communities East which used to be called it is also known as Peterborough Plus where did you say 60 groups operate under that that yes. umbrella Chris yeah so yeah so there's there's quite a lot of groups that come together um they have a membership and there's certain activities that that consortium delivers and then at the far end of our sort of working together very formal and we actually merge organizations so um, so those organizations no longer exist individually and all activities are delivered by the two organizations joined together um, it can be an acquisition it can be a merger it could be forming a parent um, forming a group with a parent and child organizations and the, uh, often the examples that we've got are often um, geographically so more recently um, Age UK Cambridgeshire and Age UK Peterborough came together to form one organization so now all the activities are delivered within one organization that covers the whole of the county rather than two different areas. So those are just a few different ways in which we can work together. Um, as I say, most of our focus is on the kind of, for, is on joint projects and consortiums um, in terms of those, those are the ones that people um, want a little bit more support when we're thinking about. So I'm gonna, um, so why do we want to work together? And that's my question to you. So um, I'd love to hear some reasons why your organisations might want to work together with another one. What kind of things might they be? Yep, Sarah. Um, so you don't actually duplicate what's already going on in, in um, a certain area. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. What other reasons might you have for wanting to work with others? Rachel? Um, so you, we uh, sometimes want to get a wider reach for publicity for events. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've joined up with the um, East Anglian storytelling festival to deliver a, uh, a black breastfeeding week um, storytelling event which was very successful which was good great thank you um and uh, uh, the organization might be able to give a a, a a more more relevant support to one of our clients so yeah so it might be better for our our clients they might be more appropriate for them yeah Any other reasons why you might want to join together and work with somebody else? Sarah? To, to tap into their knowledge and networks, really. Yeah. Yeah. Great. 
yeah so i've captured a few different reasons and they might be for proactive or reactive reasons so it might be something that um you you know set out to do or it might be that there's changing circumstances that encourage you to um to, to join together and work with someone else and they might be internal reasons and external reasons for you to do that so some of the ones that we talked about um ellie mentioned about there might be other ways to meet that our users needs more effectively um we might want to raise profile as, as rachel talked about um there's other things around financial pressure so um you know in the in the example of like age uk it could have been that some of those reasons were around becoming more financially sustainable by joining together two organizations um it, and sarah talked about other people's expertise and networks so they might have better organizational capacity um or you know by coming together we can do that um, and it could be around policy as well so depending on um, so like the change from the CCG to the ICS might might change the way that we want to work together um, outside of so that that that's a big change that's happening and that's going to make us think about working together with people in a very different way. So what are some of the benefits or challenges that we might encounter whilst we're working together? So it sounds like some of you have got some experience of that. So um, Rachel talked about the event that you ran that that seemed to be very successful. So what was the what was the kind of real benefit of coming together with the East Anglian Storytelling Festival? So, yeah, uh, we got more people to come and watch the events. Yeah. And it was good fun. Good fun. <laughs> great and were there any challenges with that what was that some of the we had to be quite clear about who was doing what mm -hmm. and if there was um if we had to pay for any services that they were providing mm. um and they had to be clear about whether they wanted paying or, or were they doing it all as volunteers or what mm. <laughs> yeah so that that clarity around what we're all doing and not doing and yeah. yeah yeah how about how about anybody else have you um got any other benefits that we might have of of coming coming together or any challenges that you've faced when you've tried to work with somebody so it's in a good shared use of uh, expertise and knowledge Mm -hmm. um, you know, for different areas of impact between different different charities. Yeah. Ones of support. Great. Yeah. Oh, Sally. Uh, oh, uh, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I think you you have from the very outset got to be very clear about um, who's doing what and. Um, as a very small organization you've got to be careful that you don't just get swallowed up by a bigger one if you're if you're trying to work collaboratively um because sometimes well everybody comes from their own perspective don't they and their own position and um i think honest conversations are really quite good mm. yeah Yeah, so I, I did quite a bit of research on this and there was lots and lots of <laughs> lots and lots of reasons. So um, we've talked about some of them. So there's lots around sharing information, best practice, expertise. Sometimes it might be around developing a joint response to something. Um, so and um, you know, often we're asked to feed in on things about the voluntary sector as a whole so that um, umbrella organizations can go back and represent the views of all of its membership when they're campaigning so that's um, uh, so that we can speak with that that one voice um, we talked about increasing reach duplicate you know not duplicating what we're doing um, funders can often be really 
um, excited when people work together. Um, and we might be able to access funding that we wouldn't be able to by ourselves. So, um, you know, the, the criteria that the funders have, we might not meet as individual organisations, but coming together, we could. Um, but there, there can be quite a lot of challenges. And I think we picked up on, on some of these around, um, you know, unrealistic expectations about what, what we're here to do, this, especially for smaller organisations. Um, it can be very confusing. Um, it can be difficult to agree what, what, what it is that we're, we're here to do and what we're not here to do. Um, the resourcing of it, um, have we actually got enough resources to really deliver the activity that we want to deliver together? Um, that, that's a big challenge. There can be more bureaucracy. Um, so, um, you know, there can be more forms to fill in. There's more people to talk to. There's more updates to write. There's more newsletters and websites and um, et cetera. Um, it can be confusing for funders. So am I, am I paying for your service this time? Am I supporting somebody else's? How does, how does that work? It can be, as a former finance person, it can be confusing from a finance perspective um, around, is, is this bit of the money our money? Is that somebody else's money? Um, so there's quite a lot of challenges that can be um, faced uh, when we are trying to work together. So what we're going to talk about most of the session um, is how do we ensure that the working, our working together is successful. Um, so the first part of that is around the process um, that we go through um, in order to actually set up working arrangements with somebody else. So the first step in that process is really about identify, identifying the working together, the collaboration. So what is the purpose of that collaboration? So being really clear about what it is that we are here to do together. What can we only deliver together that we can't deliver apart? What, what are we here for? Um, and as part of that, I think Sarah talked about that real open and honest honesty. So what what are, what are my goals for this? You know, what what does my organisation need to get out of this? And I'm being really upfront and honest about that. Is is it about money? Is it about resource? What, what is it really about? Um, because um, we need to be really clear and, and re, you know remove the um, misunderstandings, um, potential misunderstandings as quickly as possible. Um, understanding your strategic environment. So um, what, what's happening out in the world around you. Um, and then identifying who those potential collaborators might be. So, um, you know, looking at stakeholder, um, looking at your stakeholders, looking at networks, um, who have you worked with before, um, who else is doing things in the kind, same kind of space that you are um, and really working on building those relationships. Um, so from the outset that we're focusing on, um, how do we work really well together? Where do our values overlap? Um, what's our what's of our shared values that we might have of how we want to work together? And then the next part of the process is can take quite a long time and it's all about planning um, and it's you know plan 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 um, I think some of the some of the things I was reading I think used the word plan about 12 times um, in this part of <laughs> so um, it's all about having a really strong plan so developing that shared understanding of what success is going to look like so how are you going to um, measure that the that your 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 project or your way your joint working is is delivering what you want it to um, it's quite a lot to think about in terms of time scales it can be it can take a lot longer than people think in order to get these joint working arrangements um, up and running 
um, in part that's um, that's to do with governance so who within your organization can actually approve you working together so understanding potential conflicts of interest um, do you have trustees who need to sign off these joint working arrangements um, etc you know how often do they meet or you know what kind of documentation do they need in order to to agree to your um, your project um, discussing how you'll work together in practice so you know who will actually talk to who from which organizations um, how, how do you make sure that those you know all the way through the organizations how do you make sure that those people are linked together so that the people who are actually delivering the activities um, have the relationships that it's not just the people who've agreed at the top top level of your organization to to form that collaboration um, the big one I think is agreeing who will do what and when um, so being really clear about these are the list of activities that need to happen this is the what activity that my organization will do this is when we will do it this is the the way in which you can expect that to be communicated this is the activity that your organization will need to do and the time scales um, so that so that you can understand how how the how it's going to work across everybody um, so drawing up an agreement or terms of reference i've got a couple of examples um, in the document actually i'm just gonna pop one up on oh i've lost my thing um so my resources page oh what's it done now sorry hopefully you're still seeing my slides after after that yeah perfect uh, so there's a couple of templates that we've got links to um in the they're now going to be really slow <laughs> that opened up really quickly this morning when i when i tested it all um yeah so for example we've got some some um sample partnering agreements um and um so um and there's another one which is from the charity commission um lost no idea where that's gone all right love a technical here you go so like a partnership agreement so um yeah what are some of the what are some of the, th the headings that you might want to have included in your document so um the charities commission one is, is a bit more formal so you know um but yeah so what is the nature and the duration of the agreement so is this an ongoing um, arrangement is this a fixed arrangement for a specific period of time um, what are some of the responsibilities and obligations um, and there's lots of suggestions in here um, what are the obligations of the partner um, and there's lots and lots of good suggestions in here and some standard some standard things to think about so you know how will disputes be dealt with um how you know but what 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 might trigger the agreement to come to an end um what are you know are, are there any confidentiality or um other other things that we need to consider um there's also things like, um, yeah, what is our, what is our, um, what is the strategy? What is our aim that we're here to deliver together? Um, so which, which tends to sit more within the, the memorandum of understanding or what's our objectives? Um, they might be some measurable objectives um, in terms of numbers. They might be financial, they might be people. It might be, um, objectives around how people will feel so thinking about um, how are you going to measure and evaluate um, how that you will know whether this is working or not um, and we we do um, have more resources on uh, monitoring and evaluation and it's something that we often run training on as well so if you're thinking about how do we evaluate it's actually important to um, think about that upfront, because especially if you might need some baseline data in order to compare um, your performance against. Um, 
and then it might be yeah specifically what do you expect from each um, from each uh, organization um there's some standard kind of we we expect people to have you know what what of our working um, relationships going to be how will we communicate do we agree that we will communicate within what what time frame so if we're making decisions how quickly do those decisions need to be made um etc what are those decision making processes so there's lots of um and there's there's more examples of of templates for for these kinds of working arrangements that you can find online but um these two will be shared in the slides um just yeah the problems of having two screens is it always puts it on the wrong screen um so so that that's good and one of the things to say about that is even if it's a very informal working together arrangement it can be useful to complete such a document it doesn't necessarily have to be legally binding but it can be useful to use some of the headings as, as ways to capture those agreements um, at the beginning of the process. Um, one of the next things will be around reviewing what is going to get in the way of us delivering that. So what are some of the challenges that we could expect to, to come along and how are we going to deal with them when they crop up? Um, so, you know, there, there's some very common challenges that that we might face so how how will we deal with those and then the final thing that pulls all of these together is having a really detailed project plan um, with all of the activities um, listed um, key check-in dates um, success measures along the way so if we want this part if we want this arrangement to um, work with 300 people over the next year where do we expect to be after three months where do we expect to be after six months because it, it won't be linear um, you know it might take us a long time to get up and running or whatever so what are some of the measures that we might expect to see along the way then we move into the the implementation phase um, of the process so this is where um, we're delivering the activities um, and it's important at this stage to be monitoring the plan um, regularly. Um, is, is it working? Isn't it working? What tweaks do we need to make? Um, and, and making sure that we're updating everybody as part of that. Um, it's important in dur the, during the implementation phase to have those regular open and honest communications. Um, so have we got like a communication plan? So are we updating all the different groups on how we're progressing, um, et cetera? And, and not forgetting at this stage that we still need to be working on maintaining those relationships. Um, so we still need to be thinking about who are the people we're working with? What are those values? What are our ways of working that we've agreed? What are the behaviors? Um, uh, because all that we've created those relationships, but we still need to be working on them throughout implementation. And then the final part of our process is around reviewing. So um, you might have a formal review at the end. You might have, depending on how long it is, if it's a kind of indefinite <laughs> working arrangement, you might you know review it annually or every two years depending on how long it's going to take for you to see traction against your activities um, so going back to those objectives that you agreed um, are you delivering against them are there any changes required um, are we still happy to carry on working together or are we getting towards a natural end um, and, and then thinking about how will we work together in the future? You know, you've invested a lot of time and energy and building these relationships. And even if it was for a fixed term project, you know, what are the ways in which you're going to maintain and um, think about working together in the future? 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to pop you into a couple of breakout rooms, really, um, to talk about um, some successful projects that you've been part of. So um, I'm go we're going to pop you in. I've got yes, yeah, so we're going to pop you into rooms of three, probably. Um, maybe yeah, if we do two rooms. Um, oh, I've got a I've got a late joiner. Um, So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop you into some rooms for about 20 minutes. Um, and what we'd like you to do, and there is a way that I can share this into the, the um, into Zoom, even when, um, even when you're in breakout rooms. Um, but I will also um, copy the questions into the chat box just before I pop you into breakout rooms so that you've got them. Um, so yes, yeah, so I want you to think about a really successful project that you've been part of. Um, to share with your small group. So think about some questions, some prompt to questions. So what was the project? What were the high points? What were the low points? What, what did you learn from being part of that? And what were some of the key insights? And when we come back together into the main group, I'd like each of you to bring back a key recommendation to the whole group on if, if, if I were to set off on a new joint project tomorrow, what is the key recommendation that you would give me? Lovely. I love it when people don't come back right till the right last second of the breakout <laughs> rooms. Um, we just move the car. Sorry. Great. Okay. So, um, I realised Chris reminded me um, before um, she went into a breakout room. I forgot to um, let you all introduce yourself to each other. So what I thought we'd do is um, I asked, I gave you all a task when we went into the um, to the breakout rooms to come back with one key recommendation that you would give a a a group who were setting off on a on a new way of working together so what i'd like is that if we um if we go around the room and introduce ourselves so um and give us our give your recommendation so um i'm gonna i'm gonna have to just kick start with somebody so sally you are top left hand in my screen so if you wouldn't mind going first that would be lovely okay so um, for people that don't know me, I work for Living Sport, so we're the active partnership for Cambridgeshire and Peterborough. So we're a Sport, Sport England funded project, uh, organisation that basically encourages communities to become more physically active. My remit within that is within the children and young people team. So purely work with organisations that encourage particularly underserved groups of young people to become more physically active. Um, Previous to that, I was in a role with Cambridge City Council, so I was sports development manager uh, for 11 years. And the project I discussed was the Olympic torch relay um, when the Olympics came to town in Cambridge in 2012. Um, so my role within that was to look at the legacy of the Olympics coming to Cambridge, to look at opportunities for local residents to become more active, um, and we basically had a process where we uh, worked with a lot of organisations from, you know, very high up national organisations to, you know, local grassroots sports clubs. So, you know, and everything in between. And the first thing was we didn't just want to put on a whole load of activities and events that were purely sport. So we wanted to look at it from a cultural point of view. So we teamed up with arts colleagues and we teamed up with colleagues in the culture sector that we'd never teamed up with before. So one of the projects that came out of it was uh, the outdoor table tennis project in Cambridge City. And we wanted to predominantly put those things in the local parks, um, but we also put them in some real, table tennis tables in some really unusual places so we had tables in the library we had tables in the mosque you know and it was just taking sport to different areas that perhaps were underrepresented and weren't aware of you know the impact it could have um, 
So as a whole, we managed a lot of projects that happened between January 2012 and December 2012. We worked with lots of partners, education, uh, arts, culture, sports clubs, national governing bodies of sport and everything else in between. Some of the projects the city council delivered, some of the projects partners delivered. Um, I'd say probably the key recommendation was understanding the partners. So in terms of partner commitment, so it could be a partner had an idea for a really good project, but they didn't have the funding. Could we support them either through city council funding or help them with external funding applications? It could be they had a location, a venue that was really you know, ideal for activity. And we, you know, we tried to match them with other partners that you know, may have the resources or the manpower. Um, so we had a whole host of things. We had dance festivals, we had disability sports sessions, we had walking routes, we had the outdoor table tennis project I've just mentioned. We worked with education, you know, in terms of getting more young people playing sport. So one is partner commitment. The second one is about exit routes. So for us, it wasn't just sport, but anything that we put on, we wanted to make sure that people could continue post Olympics. You know, so whether it was a 300 um, young people attending the youth games event at Coldham's Common, taking part in various sports, we wanted to make sure that the sports clubs were ready to take those young people post Olympics. We wanted to make sure, uh, you know, that schools were equipped to be able to deliver after school clubs. We wanted to make sure that, you know, local clubs had capacity for volunteers because we also had quite a lot of games makers. So the volunteers that went down to London to volunteer a lot of them quite a number of them came from Cambridge so we wanted to support them post Olympics you know in volunteering opportunities as well so quite a big project a very exciting project um, but it was a good opportunity to you know create links and develop some really strong relationships lovely thank you Sally that sounds incredible what a great example for us all um, Mal Malcolm, you you are next on my on my screen. Would you mind just saying hello and maybe sharing your your key recommendation? Say hello, you reckon? <laughs> All right, okay. Well, so, so I'll say hello then. Yeah, right. Uh, my recommendation would have to be understand what everybody thinks they're going to get out of it, um, and yeah. Uh, be aware that that what they think might change over time. Mm. Yeah, He's, thank you. I'll keep it short and sweet. They are <laughs> lovely. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, Ellie. Okay. Yeah, I'm Ellie. I am the uh, volunteering development worker at Cambridge CVS, and I must admit, it took me a few minutes to think about it. Uh, the, the key recommendation. It was easy to describe the way that I network with other organizations. When it came to recommendation, not so easy. Uh, probably because I've been very lucky and I've always had very good experiences. So um, yeah, I, I, you have rec you've got very clear recommendation when things don't go right, I think, <laughs> not when they go <laughs> smoothly. And I think that what I came up with is that um it is to keep it human and, and uh, make a relationship with the organization you work with so uh definitely needs uh, uh you know we have to put effort in our communications uh, everything that involves communication so clear roles clear responsibilities uh up to where we want to go working together and where we then separate for example but also sense of humor i think is needed in the sector uh, and empathy i i must understand what the worker i'm working with is going through what kind of uh, lack of resources they might have and i don't or the other way around so really trying to uh, to work together also by forcing where the other organization could have troubles and and where i can help basically lovely <laughs> Thank you, Ellie. Uh, Sarah, you're next on my screen. Okay, so I'm Sarah. I'm um, I run 
Possibility, which is a minute charity delivering specialist exercise sessions for people with long term um, neurological conditions, stroke survivors, multiple sclerosis, those sort of things. Um, so we have been uh, over the last few years, we've been working with high friends to um, to deliver on their behalf in Histon. And um, and on the whole, it's a very good relationship. And we because because it's been going over a few years, you know, we do actually know each other quite well now. And um, and that, of course, makes it so much easier when you're first starting out. You know, it's like any relationship. You kind of have to sum the person up a bit and find out where they're coming from. But um, because we've been working with them for quite some time, it, it's been fine. We have to, uh, so what would my key recommendations be? Um, effective communication, definitely. Uh, don't sell yourself short. Don't try and fit yourself into, into somebody else's, um, you know, a peg really. And, um, and don't be frightened to talk about money because actually <laughs> that's the only thing, these, only way these things get done. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think those are my recommendations, actually. Lovely. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Chris, are you are you, are you going to join in with some, with a recommendation? I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, well, actually, I was just going to um, pick up on what Sarah said, really, because Sarah made a very good point in the group chat we had about thinking when you're putting in a bid, uh, a grant bid, she's talking about full cost recovery. Mm -hmm. And it is something we need to think about all of the costs that are involved in our activities and, and uh, I mean Anna fessed up that she'd done a bit of volunteering because you know there wasn't really the time allocated as, as is quite common in the voluntary sector to, to do the job you want to do you end up putting in more hours um, and that's fine if you can do that but it's just resourcing things properly and if you can't resource things if you have if, if that just isn't uh, realistic have a uh, you know, a, a very honest conversation about where maybe other ways that you can kind of recoup or share resources so that one partner doesn't end up spending more than another. Or, and, 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 and Sarah also made a very good point. I'm just, just feeding off Sarah here um, about resentment, because I have seen that in partnerships where people yeah. start to resent the feeling that they are putting more in than the other party. Because then they both get joint prestige from it but maybe they work that little bit harder put that bit, bit more in so something to be aware of okay thank you chris um anna we're heading off to you next um hi yeah i'm anna from the illuminate charity based here in cambridge um yeah i was discussing um a lovely living sport actually um a funded project pilot project with find your wild that we've uh, recently completed and for me that was quite a new venture so a bit of a learning curve um, but I think and I was very lucky because I, I've, I've actually got a connection with Find Your Wild so had an understanding of how they work etc I think communication was mentioned that's so important but I think it, it, it's about creating a level playing field from from the offset isn't it and um, making sure that you've got shared aims you know what is what is the outcome of the project you know what what are you both working towards um so i've i've learned yeah i've learned a huge amount um and, and it's been a really really um great little project um going back to sally actually i was involved in some of the olympic uh, arts projects when i was in my role at the cambridge Women's resources center and we created great big artistic things to take on a little parade so you know I, I, I know the benefits of actually coming together um because ultimately but it benefits our um our beneficiaries you know that's that's who we want the outcomes for um so yeah I'd say a, a level playing field a, a connection um clear aims and communication that's me <laughs> lovely thank you Anna um thank you. Ne next is Chris off mute sorry uh yeah hi i'm chris uh we're green so i'm um, a bit new to this i've only been in this role for about three weeks so i will i will, I will bring my experiences i've learned so far but my role's uh, community support manager at wood green 
Um, so our aim is to, is to, I suppose, supporting pets, but supporting pets through supporting pet owners. Um, so that's what our goal is to do. So anybody that, you know, obviously we, we can improve a pet's life by supporting an owner to care for that pet in the best way. And it's, 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 it's very mutual to do the two. So, you know, my, my learnings definitely so far are to be, um, you know, to have an awareness, especially for people to know what we do. Um, but we are there to support anybody. Um, people make quite emotive decisions around their pets and their pets highly influence their behavior and what they do. So I think for any kind of, um, we're working with sort of hoarders or people fleeing domestic violence, um, people accessing food banks, that kind of thing. But there's huge touching points that Wood Green can get involved in with people just from knowing that we can we can be there to advise that because pets will influence, like I said, what, what they do. Um, and for us to know, myself to know, again, who's out there and who does what for us to tap mm -hmm. into very much the same as well, um, because you can't do anything in silo. So I would say awareness and approachability would be my um, my thanks to tap into this lovely thank you chris um and rachel oh you're on mute rachel okay. sorry um i'm currently the chair of cambridge storytellers um and probably the secretary as well um malcolm does the money phew <laughs> yeah so um we're a very small group i think from our um, experience of working with other organizations, my main takeaway message, which I didn't mention in the chat was thank everybody. Thank everybody all the time. You can't thank people too much <laughs> because they're all doing more than they're either paid for or more than they took on when they said they'd volunteer, um, more than they ever thought possible. <laughs> And a bit of thanking goes a long way. Lovely. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, some really, really um, good ones there. Yeah, that um, um, Anna mentioned something about, you know, remembering that this is for our beneficiaries as well. Um, so, and, and yeah, being really grateful and thanking people. Um, lovely. So um, I've just got a couple more bits to, to share with you before we before we finish today. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, okay, so yeah, so um, I found there's, there's lots of things that you can find online and when you look for top tips um, uh, and we've got some more to share as well. So um, I think some of these were picked up. So be open and honest. Um, from the beginning about your expectations. So I think Sarah said, you know, you need to talk about money, um, but, but expectations and um, it will make it easier in the long run if you just air those things at the beginning. Um, and also never agree to something that you know that you can't deliver just so that you can be seen to work in partnership with somebody else. It will come back to bite you later. So I think we, Chris and Anna mentioned about, you know, can we really resource this thing? Can we actually do it? Or are we going to have the goodwill of our staff to volunteer to deliver to this? Um, I'd, I'd say, yeah, even informal relationships need to have something in writing, um, just so that you can be really clear about what you've agreed. So it doesn't need to be a full, you know, um, legal document, but just something that says, this, this is what we're all bringing um, to the party. Um, and I think mine would be, if something isn't working, then say, um, don't wait until the end of the project um, when it's too late. Um, you know, there's always time to make changes to, to make sure that you are delivering what you need to do. Um, so, yeah, so don't don't be afraid of saying if it's not working for you. Um, so what we've got on our last thing so i'm going to send you this so that you've you've got the the links so um oh, the templates aren't showing interesting um don't know why they're not showing now right, i'll fix that before i send it back out to you um, so uh so there's there's you can have a look on our website we've got a page that's all about working in partnership um with some top tips and some some links to other um, other places and then there's a few um, organizations um, that 
um, have done quite a lot of research, especially around collaboration within the, the voluntary um, and community sector. So, um, so the NCVO has got some great resources. Some of that is, is free to access for everybody. Some of that you can only access if you're a member, um, but they have got quite a lot um, on their free to access pages. Um, IVAR, which I can never remember what it stands for, um, Institute for no voluntary something um something and research i think um they've got some really great resources um lots of and they they've done some more formal research some of which we've pulled into our uh, uh, session today and then the the charity commission um also have some um useful things about um collaboration um especially for obviously for registered charities and thinking about governance um, etc so some of the more formal documentation um, they have available um, on there as well i'm just gonna stop and we'll as i say we'll um, share the the links um, to that i'm just gonna double check the um yeah so chris has popped in the um chat um, a link to um, a survey monkey, um, which is just for us to evaluate um, how um, our session today. Um, so yeah, so if you're able to complete that, that's really helpful, um, just so that we can get a sense of um, how you thought the session went and um, any tweaks that we might make to it in the future. Um, this is obviously part of a series of um, workshops that we that we run um, for groups. Um, Chris, I'm trying to remember what our next our next workshops are. So we've got um, we've got well next week. If anyone's interested, we've got um, some we've got public health are doing a half an hour session for us on talking to people about COVID vaccination. Um, if, if you've got any, if you work with anyone who is COVID hesitant, um, um, perhaps would like some more information, or you would like to train up some of your volunteers to talk to service users, it's just a half an hour session. It's free. It's online. That's next Tuesday at one thirty. There's a well-being session that we're running free within Poets. That's coming up later on in the month, um, and then going into September. Uh, we have got trustee training coming up and we've also got we, we, we're also going to have some um, work we're going to do with Cambridge Ethnic Forum on um, on cultural awareness training and some recruiting and retaining expert you know and volunteering training so all sorts of things well we send you the email we'll send you a link to our training and events and you can have a look on there um, and that's all free to members of CCBS and Hubs Forum and some things are free because they come through the Support Cambridgeshire project, which we mentioned earlier. So they're worth having a look. Yeah, there's always there's always plenty happening. <laughs> we're, we're always we're always doing something. Then there's um, if anybody's doing um, needing any and to think about any grant funding at the moment, the National Lottery Community Fund. Um, has recently extended its deadline, which was today, and they've extended it by two weeks. And that's for organisations um, who are looking to bring people back together face to face um, post post COVID. Um, and I think it's three hundred to two and a half thousand pounds um, worth of funding available. Um, so that that's a great um opportunity for people if you if you want to to do some activity face to face but you need some support or equipment to help you you know bring bring people back together so they so do yeah. look do into that income. you have to have an income of under fifty thousand, but i think some of the people here do yeah um, they're quite desperate to spend the money they so are stop recording quick <laughs> um, yeah so you know it's very light touch you just have to answer four questions so yeah you, even if it's not even if you're too big to apply do spread the word yeah yeah it's very very easy to apply for um, very little um so yeah so it might be something again sally that if you're talking to other groups it might be something that that they could benefit from and um, there's also um cambridge community foundation have have some um, some funding available 
um, for sports clubs, Sally, around um, clubs in crisis. So um, again, making sure that people are picking up on those bits of funding that they might be eligible for. Anna, you've got your you've got your hand up. I just missed who you said about the funding uh, about bringing people back together. It's the National Lottery Community Fund. Right. It's oh, NLC. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, and originally the deadline was today and they've extended it by two weeks. And I think, as Chris mentioned, they're quite keen to um, to make sure that as much of that funding gets out into the community as possible, which is why they've extended the deadline. Um, and it's, yeah, one of the easiest ones that I've seen <laughs> um, more recently. So they're, they're very keen to to get that money out and I know that speaking to the um, and I'll, I'll I'll include the link to that fund um, in the email that we circulate after the session um, and speaking to Cambridge Community Foundation a couple of weeks ago they've also got some funds which will pop on the email that they're quite keen to get to get spent some of which might be relevant for for some of you so um, I'll definitely um, include those as well. Um, if, and if you're ever looking for any funding, the Support Cambridge website um, has access um, to a funding portal where you can search through various funding opportunities that might be relevant for your groups. Um, we do occasionally run workshops and I think there's a recording of a workshop, isn't there, Chris, on how to use the funding portal as well. So, And you can always get in touch with um, one of the development workers and we can help you find um, help you work through that and find funds that might be appropriate for you. Um, but I think that's everything. So we've got six minutes left. So um, but if, if you could put in the evaluation form, that'd be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in that six minutes, please feel free to click on the the link to the survey monkey just so that we can um, pick up those bits of evaluation. And if anybody's got any last questions um, that that you you want to think about as as part of the group, then please feel free to oh Rachel you've got your hand up that link in the chat isn't live um, oh. Oh, right, okay well, let's, let's have a look at that okay Chris will, Chris will fix that thank you for letting us know Rachel um, so I, I, I didn't need to evaluate so I checked, clicked on it <laughs> um, um, can I also uh, uh, remind everyone that I organise uh, a walk once a month. It's going to be on the 25th of August at this time. And uh, it's a chance to meet people who might uh, want to volunteer as well as uh, uh, other staff from other organisations. So, for instance, last time we actually had more people from organisations than uh, uh, residents so it ended up uh, <laughs> as a, as a, as a quite an interesting conversation between the stadium uh, i mean the Cambridge Com united community trust and find your wild for example talking about possible opportunities to work together um, just that so you know that there are also uh, right now, um, many organizations are trying uh, to find other ways as well to meet and network, uh, as well as the ones that Chris and Vic and Sally are organizing. And one of that is actually this book. So if you want to know more yeah. about it, just email me and, uh, and I'll let you know more. <laughs> and, and obviously, <laughs> Living Sport do run the networking yeah. events, yes, um, exactly. which, which are... Um, and I know they recently did the Cows About Cambridge Trail as one of those events. So there's also other opportunities to um, get out and meet people um, yeah. as well and do some activity as you do it. So lovely. So we'll, yeah, we'll follow up from today with the, um, the link to the recording for the session, the slides and the links to those um, funders and uh, our training and events that are coming up. Um, but I think all that's left for me is to say a big thank you all for um, coming this morning and thank you for um, being uh, in, engaged in the conversation and uh, for sharing your stories. Um, there's lots of really great tips there. Um, and, uh, and I hope and if you've got any questions, if you are thinking about working together with somebody new and you want to run any questions past us again, feel free to reach out and one of the development workers will 
will help you um, think about those arrangements, any documents that you might want to put in place, facilitate any conversations that you that you might want to have. So we're here to support you as you go through those processes. But um, yeah, thank you very much, everybody.